Hey everybody, it's Lex from PDQ.com. I'm gonna take you through best practices using PDQ Deploy. All right, a couple things we gotta discuss before we jump into this. One, everybody's network's a little different. Some people have faster network backbone, some people have more PCs, some people have less. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the tools so that you can set this up for your environment. You know, do a little uh, scientific wild, uh, yeah, that swag thing, scientific guess as to uh, get deployed to perform best for you. So do that, let's just kind of walk through. We're gonna to go to options and preferences and we're gonna highlight the ones that really make a difference in regards to your systems. All right, let's just start with auto downloads. Everybody knows auto downloads is this. I download a package, if you turn on auto downloads, okay, what that's gonna do when a new version of a package that is an auto download package, and let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, that's any of these with a blue arrow on it, right? If a new version of that comes out, the way I've got it set, it's gonna wait seven days and then replace the one I've got with the new version. Um, this is actually really, really cool. And you can set this at the package level, but globally, this is where you set it, okay? Again, that is obviously up to you, but it's a, you know, a great feature. Let's jump to database. This does make some performance differences. You'll notice my database is 1.5 meg. The reason mine's so small is this is a new one. I haven't done a lot of deployments, so there's not a lot of deployment history in here. So it's kind of small. Now, everybody knows, smaller, more compact your database is, the faster it is to access that information. Just less to go through, right? Um, here we go. To keep that optimized and cleaned up, right? It, it, optimizing the database right here. If you hit this, okay, what it's gonna do is gonna get rid of all that deleted space that's still in the database, compact it, just do a general you know, database vacuum and clean up, right? What it will do though, you do need to know this, it's gonna stop the background service, okay? When it does that, if you have running deployments, it will abort them, they'll die, it'll just kill them. So just be aware, when you do this, make sure you don't have anything scheduled and running, okay? Can't talk best practices without talking about backups, all right? Here's where you set your backups. Uh, a couple things here, again, depending on the way you wanna back up the database that houses this information. Um, I would suggest, you know, we're backing this up on the C drive of the machine it's installed in. So if this machine blows up, I just lost my backup. So get the backups somewhere else, just a good UNC path and put it on a file share, right? And then determine how many backups and how often you want that to run. So there you go. Mine runs uh, on Saturdays at 10 p.m. All right, next, deployments, all right? So default, run deployments is deploy user. I would highly suggest you run this and leave it at this. It's the best setting. Um, timeouts, deployments will term out, terminate after 60 minutes, okay? So when, how that works is when the deployment starts. So if I send it to, you know, 100 machines and it's only, you know, there's some queued up and that deployment hasn't started, that 60 seconds doesn't start till the deployment starts. So you know, on the machine, let's say I send seven zip to Bugs Bunny. As soon as it starts on Bugs Bunny, that's when that timer starts. 60 minutes, if it runs longer than that, it's gonna terminate with a timeout. So if you were installing machines, that, or not machines, software that takes longer than that, say like Office or your, you know, maybe AutoCAD, something that takes a forever long time, you may wanna set that at a package level. This is a good global setting for this. So that's where that is. Delete to finish, Delete, wow, finish deployments after 30 days, okay? Again, this keeps your database clean. You can keep this longer if you want, okay? If you're using inventory, when you do deployments, it does keep track of deployments and inventory, so there's another spot for it. So, you know, it's here, it's there. I like to keep mine clean, so I usually don't keep deployments past 30 days. If you've got a lot of machines, you know, let's say a thousand machines and you deploy, Chrome once, you've got a thousand entries on that Chrome. So, you know, a little math there, determine how long you want to store that. Uh, scanning, scan after deployments, a best practice. Normally, it's going to do the default scan profile that's set in inventory. Okay, that usually that default scan profile is the uh, standard scan, which is a big scan. It pulls hardware information in that. And if we are just, you know, deploying software, hardware is generally not going to change. So I like to change that to applications. It's a little more efficient, runs a little quicker, okay? Another thing to make things quicker for you, okay, is the offline status here, okay? Ping before deploying. So 
In this case, we go to deploy to a machine, it sends a ping if it doesn't respond. We don't just kick off the deployment and wait for it to connect and stuff. We just say, it's not on and we move on, okay? You can send a wake on LAN or attempt to wake the machine um, by checking this. Now, just to understand, if you, you've got to have wake on LAN set up, you got to let the broadcast happen, you know, security's got to let that, and your NIC's got to be set up to uh, accept that broadcast. Um, but it can wait up to, I think it is five or six minutes for a machine to wake up for that deployment. So if you've got a really big environment and you've got a bunch of machines that are offline, it very well could extend the time it takes to do those deployments, trying to wake those machines up. So um, the way you could go around, get around that is just uh, in your schedules, put a heartbeat trigger. And then when the machine comes on, it'll take care of it at that moment. But that's where the wake on LAN is set, okay? Retry queue, okay, you can set a default here. I've never found a good reason to set a global default for deployments in the retry queue, okay? If a machine's offline, I don't want it to force a restart on that every hour. There's better ways to do it. Check out my heartbeat schedule videos. That's there. I mean, it, it, I would do it. If you're gonna do it, do it at, a, at the deployment level, not at a global level, but there is a setting there for you. Let's jump down to performance. All right, so deploying, right? You don't wanna flood your network, right? And this is where you can determine how many deployments run at a time. So let me explain what concurrent targets and then total concurrent targets are. So concurrent targets per deployment, if I deploy Chrome, let's say I have 100 machines and I deploy to all 100 of machines, it's only gonna do eight at a time, okay? So one finishes, so now there's only seven, it'll kick off the next one, keep that you know, queue of eight filled up until it's done, okay? Total concurrent targets, in this case is 32, so I can send eight Chrome, eight Firefox, eight Windows updates, and eight 7-zip, and it'll do eight of all of those up to 32 concurrent. So I can do multiples, okay? Um, the good and bad there, okay? Again, I would say if you've got a really, really big network, you can change these numbers. When I change them, I like to keep them, you know, eight, 16, 32. So if I were to change this to 16, I would change the concurrent targets to 64, okay? Uh, I've seen some really big environments. Again, you can overrun or flood your network. Be very careful with this. When I say flood your network, your console is just gonna be kicking off a bunch of these. So uh, the biggest one I've worked on, uh, 15,000 machines, the sweet spot is I think we did 30, I think it was 16 and 64 and we were able to get through easily in time overnight the deployment. So <clears throat> again, this is where you can adjust how many, just you know, be aware of your network and what actually will be going on there. I'm gonna set mine back to the defaults of uh, 8 and 32. All right, copy mode, push and pull. What that does is this, if you take your repository and here's your repository, right? Right now, my repository is existing on the C drive of this machine, the console. That's the default, right? Okay, user public documents on this machine. Now, good, bad, let's say you wanted to move those onto a file share or a DFS share, okay? You definitely, under performance here, if those are on a DFS share or a file share, you wanna change this from push to pull, okay? And here's why. Push pushes it from the console to the end node, okay? Pull sends instructions to the end node and says, okay, go grab this file from this UNC path to the file location. Now, the good thing about that is if it's a file share, a push is gonna copy from the file share to the console to the end node. Okay, a pull is gonna go straight to the UNC path and grab it from the file share. If it's DFS and you're deploying to another site, it's gonna resolve that to the closest or in most cases, the local copy and do the deployment there. So that's what the push and cop, you know, push and pull copy mode do. Okay. Oh, also this limit the bandwidth utilization. You'll notice if I do go to pull it, grays this out because the only NIC I can control in this case is the one on this machine. So all right, service TCP, service manager TCP connections. I do find in most cases I disable this and my connections to my machines go faster. Again, test this out in your environment, know, know this though, this is not just for deploy. In this case, it's a setting 
that will change the setting for the machine. So be aware of what you're doing there. Okay. Uh, let's repository. We talked about locating the repository, right? The other nice thing is right here, see unused files and you'll be able to clean those out. I think I already cleaned. Yeah, I cleaned mine out, but there'd be a list of files that aren't used here. You can delete those and clean those up. Just make sure you're wanting to delete them. I just don't go slam them all and delete them because let's say I was building a package and I hadn't built the package yet. What it's saying is these are the files in the repository that are not associated with a package. So you could be deleting somebody's, you know, work they hadn't finished. So just, just be aware. And finally, let's just talk target filters. These are the machines I want to make sure if I, ex these are the exclusions, right? These are machines I am excluding from getting any deployments, right? So let's, in this case, Ma Bell, Rick Sanchez, Micro, and WKRP, I don't want to do any deployments to, okay? I want to do those by hand. I don't want to accidentally send things to those. That's where you put them. You can do, like I, I did names there, you can do uh, whole subnets if you want, okay? So I can't deploy to that subnet. Again, this is kind of a fail safe in case, you know, you want to make sure that certain machines are not getting deployed to, but that's where you put that. And deleting them is highlight the one you don't want and delete it. Okay, inclusions. If you do this, you have to include each machine or you have to include the subnet. Okay, I find exclusions are easier. You can deploy to everybody but these as opposed to you can only deploy to these. So, again, it's up to you. Now, uh, these are the settings that are going to get you the best performance. And, again, it's different for everybody. So hopefully I've given you enough information about what these do so that you can fine tune it for your network environment. Thank you for watching. I'm Lex from PDQ.com.